Hi, I'm Jim, W6LG. Well, that's a surprise. <laughs> I'm surprised. So, uh, I'm surprised by the amount. It's crap. And I want to be understood. I'm a communicator, not a broadcaster. Greetings. I'm Jim, W6LG, as you can tell by the call sign growing out of the back of my head. Hi, I'm Jim W6LG. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. It's hotter than blazes. The uh, thermometer is reading 103.5 degrees. I'm at 2250 feet, probably the valley floor, and it's um, 1137 on a Sunday. Probably the valley floor is 106 to 110 degrees. So, uh, absolutely blistering hot day. Humidity is low, fire danger is up, and so as soon as I get through, I'm going to turn my scanner back on and listen to the fire department. An article in um, the latest QST, and this is I'm recording this in July, and I've got the August 2016 QST, about the new game-changing transceiver, the ICOM 7300. Uh, it's a neat transceiver. It does a lot of things well for an entry-level rig at $1,500. It's, it's a really good deal. Um, if I were looking for another transceiver, it would be high on my list. But there's an interesting thing about the way they've done the S-meter, and we use S-meters every time we talk to somebody. So what does it matter? Well, they did stick with the standard um, of, well, I'll read what it says. For decades, it's been generally accepted that an S-meter reading of S9 corresponds to an input signal level of 50 microvolts and that each S unit represents a change of 6 dB. What does that mean? 6 dB, well in a prior episode we talked about dBs and every 3 dB was double so you've got 6, so you've got 3, three here and 3 here, 2 times 2, 4. So to go from S7 to S8 on a normal transceiver, a typical transceiver, would take a change of 6 dB or 4 times in signal strength. Uh, beyond S9 gets to be really interesting because when a station is S9, let's say plus 10, that's a 10 times increase. 10 dB equals 10 times. Uh, if it goes from S9 to 20 over, that's a 20 dB change and that's a 1 and 2 zeros or 100 times. Uh, 10 times 10. ICOM 7300 does a different thing for the S unit. Instead of it being um, 6 dB, which is the industry standard, the ICOM 7300 uses a 3 dB per S unit scale. I don't have any idea why they would do that, um, but it uh, it leads to an interesting question, and that is, um, if we're if we're looking at two rigs side by side and uh, one has got the 6 dB standard and the other has got the 3 dB standard. Uh, is the ICOM 7300 going to look a little better because the S meter reading is, is going to be higher? I don't think they did it for that. I don't know why why they would do it. Let's talk about signal reports and, related to the S meter and we'll do it real quick. About 1934 or so a guy came up with um, RST. I think his name was Bratton. And uh, it's been adopted and it's not something that I th I think works well these days, but that's what we have. So it's RST, readability, signal strength, and tone. 1934, probably 90% of the guys were on um, uh, CW. Yeah, there was AM. There was no single sideband then. Well, single sideband did exist, but not in the typical amateur radio station, and probably damn few. But AM did exist in some. So. Uh, the tone was for CW, and at that time, a lot of equipment produced ripple and other things, and um, so tone became sort of an issue about how much ripple there was and how distorted it was. Today, that's not so much of an issue. Um, key clicks, for the most part, have gone away, for the most part. Um, most signals have a decent tone, so uh, that... RST system, the T is usually a 9 today, probably 99% of the time. Let's talk about uh, phone contacts and so now we're talking about readability and signal strength, just R and S. So 
uh, often referred to as RST, but frankly it's just RNS. Readability um, varies from 1 to 5. And at 1, you're not hearing any, you're not copying anything. At 5, it's 100%. So 2, 3, and 4 are variation, are, are changes from not being able to copy to 100% copy. There's steps. Um, if somebody's readability 4, usually I'm, that for me that means I'm hearing about uh, and, and understanding about 80 to 90 percent. Um, readability 3 is probably uh, 50 to 60 percent, so I'm getting about half of what the guy is saying on phone. Readability 2 is I'm just getting bits and pieces of words, and maybe I've got his call sign or, or a portion of his name, but it's, it's a tough go. So the first part of a signal report where you say somebody's 5 by 9, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, R have to do with how well you can read or understand the signal, the guy's transmission. The more confusing part then is uh, the signal strength part, which ranges from um, uh, S1 to S9 uh, on your and you can use your S meter if you want. So S1 is just, his, his signal strength is just the weakest possible thing, and, and, and you may be able to copy him 100%, but it's, it's a tough one. S2 usually to me means um, I can understand what he's saying, but he's terribly weak, just above my noise. So a guy might be readability 5 and S2, well, how does that happen? Well, the transceivers we have today, and almost all of them, are extremely sensitive. This one's a 0.15 microvolts, I think. Um, so a really weak signal today can be understood 100% by, by somebody on the other side of the planet. Uh, as you go up, uh, there are different levels of, of uh, signal strength until you get to S9, which is... Um, uh, the the maximum, let's say, and typically that would correspond to 50 microvolts or S9 on your receiver, and that's a guy that's just strong, just flat out strong. So a guy that's readability 5, strength 9, is, I'm understanding 100%, and man, is this guy strong, he's S9 or better on the S meter. And by uh, by better, uh, we often say, and, you, and if you're a new amateur radio operator, you may have heard this expression, you're 5 by 9 plus 10. So for us to modify the RST system a bit, we've started adding uh, how the signal appears on the S meter beyond S9. So it might be that he's 20 over, which is a huge signal. Jeez. So uh, that guy is 5 by 9 plus 20. And occasionally I've had guys that are maybe in the Midwest, the skip is perfect, and they're literally pegging my digital S meter. It's going all the way over to 60 over, which is just hard to believe but it does happen. There's an issue that comes in and that's related to this article in QST about how well calibrated is an S meter below S9 and the answer is not well so you can you can look at the S meter and if you want to use that as a crutch it's okay but keep in mind that your S meter probably isn't very accurate below S6 or S7 so if he's showing like uh, an S3 on your meter uh, which is uh, beginning to be a fair signal. If if that's the way it sounds to you, and you're you're understanding um, either all or part of what he's saying, then tell him he's five by three. So you can use the S meter, but you can also sometimes look at the S meter and say, no, that that's not right. Uh, he's much stronger than that, and so you might give him a five by five instead of a five by three. Um, or uh, he may be um, S8, but he sounds a lot weaker due to conditions. And if you want to modify that slightly uh, by downgrading it, that's okay too. There's no real hard and fast rule that says you have to use the S meter reading. It's basically a guide, and it becomes um, less important as the S meter reading goes down the scale, and it becomes very much less accurate. Some transceivers are really good. Some SDR receivers are absolutely perfect. 
Um, others not so much. Why is a signal report important and what do you do when you get one or you give one? Well, you, you try to give an accurate report so the guy's got a picture of how well you're hearing him. Um, if he's 5 by 9 uh, then great. But don't give him a 5 by 9 and then say, well, I missed your name, I, I didn't hear your location, and what was my report? When you said 5, you said readability 100%. If you're asking for him to repeat name, location, signal report, he wasn't 100%. He might have been uh, readability 3, where you're getting bits and pieces, and um, you've got maybe even readability 2. A station can be 2 by 9, and the way that would happen is there are static crashes on the band that are 20 over 9. The guy's S9, but the static crashes are 20 dB stronger, or 100 times stronger, and it's covering up what he's saying. And it's okay to say you're, you're 2 by 9. The guy who gets that report uh, or gets a signal report needs to process it and decide how he's going to respond to you. For example, if he says, if if I'm working a guy and he says you're five by nine, then we might carry on a conversation where we're not uh, exchanging or saying over every time or uh, giving call signs every time. Maybe just a back and forth with uh, either Vox or fast push to talk, which is what I prefer. And that's a better conversation and it's uh, it's more fluid and it's more like if you met somebody on the street and you just started talking to them, um, you wouldn't say over. You you just have this back and forth. If the guy tells me that I'm three by three, that means he's having great difficulty. I'm pretty weak. So I I think it's really incumbent upon the person who gets a signal report like that to modify how uh, he or she responds to the other station. By that I mean give his call sign... Um, Y1, uh, uh, Y2RZ, this is W6LG. My name is Jim. My name is Jim. I'm in California. I'm in California, uh, near Sacramento, near Sacramento. Uh, you are 5 by 5, 5 by 5. Uh, OK2RZ, okay, W6LG, over. Now, that's what I would do because uh, Yuri told me when he said I was 3x3 three three that he was having great difficulty hearing me. So if I repeat my name a couple of times, there's a chance that he'll be able to figure it out. Same thing with the signal report. If I repeat it a couple of times, you know, you're 5x5, you're 5x5, five 5x5, by five, five by five, five by five, then there's a good chance he's going to hear that and get it. And so that helps him out. So I'm trying to be courteous and responsive to the guy who's told me that I'm 3x3. Three by repeating things. I uh, I wouldn't do what I so often hear, which is uh, Yuri turns it to me and then I just say, Yuri, my name is Jim, I'm in California, and then just stop talking. Yuri probably didn't hear most of that and he's trying to figure out what whether or not I turned it back to him uh, because he's hearing me with a, with a weak signal. So be responsive. If you get a signal report where the guy's telling you you're really strong, great. You can have lots of fun and great conversations, and it's it's a neat thing. If it's a, if if it's for example a DX DX station, and he says you're three by three or four by four, I understand he's having some difficulty. So repeat things so that it, it gets across. If signals improve, the DX station will likely say to you, "Okay, I'm I'm hearing you better now. Uh, you're five by five or or whatever." So. Don't be hurt by a 3x3 three three signal report. Don't feel like you've been slammed, but understand that he's just not hearing you. And it, it may be it maybe your antenna, maybe your power, maybe your location, maybe propagation, maybe a lot of things. But be responsive to it and um, uh, talk it up a little bit. You may even have to say over, over if he's telling you you're really weak. And I did that with uh, a station in Sudan. could barely hear the guy, and I know he could barely hear me, so you bet I said over, over. Anyway, um, if you want to calibrate your S meter, there are devices like this. This is an Elecraft um, uh, signal generator, and it's a neat little package. It has um, several levels on it. One of them is uh, 50 microvolts, uh, and then there's also 100 microvolts, or no, sorry, one microvolt. So, uh, and you pick the band, uh, turn it to 50 microvolts, hook it up to the receiver, and calibrate the S meter for S9. So. Um, there's this, and of course, signal generators and, and all kinds of things you can use to calibrate your S meter. So, the
the goal is to get the S meter corrected S9. Below that, it's probably going to be wrong, and so you can maneuver those numbers, uh, either move them up or down as you need. Uh, but try to give an accurate representation to the guy that you're talking to so that he can respond to uh, either a really good signal report or one that's, that's really weak. Anyway, get on the air. Have lots of fun. There's, God, I've, I have talked to so many interesting guys in the last few weeks. It's just amazing. Um, it's, it's fun just to carry on a, a conversation with a guy across the United States. Um, it, and uh, some of them are just really neat people. And if you can get into what they're doing, um, some of them are doing some really amazing uh, stuff. I talked to a doctor yesterday who's doing restorations of older receivers. And he's a physician during the day, but at night he restores old radios. And, and from, uh, from what I know, he's done a great job. Anyway, it's lots of fun. Amateur radio is a service. It's also a hobby, but it's primarily a service. So, uh, And what a great public service we are. Thanks for joining me. See you the next time. I'm Jim W6LG for Ham Radio Basics 7.3.